wonderful and to see so many familiar faces and also ones that we don't get to see as often as we like. Do we have any announcements from you all or updates about people on the prayer list? I thank you for my two weeks of being off. As many of you know, um, Shirley Jury did pass away on her birthday, so she made it to 90, and um, so we'll be remembering her in the prayers about the saints. No? Okay. Um, I made a mistake in the bulletin. This is the correct hymn numbers in the middle one. I missed the number seven, so this is correct. It's in the blue hymnal, so green hymnal, blue hymnal, green hymnal. Sorry, there should be plenty. I stopped up. And I made a big mistake and didn't even put a sermon in there. And you're not getting away without a sermon. <laughs> <laughs> and Bishop Dunlop is going to be giving it, so it'll be a, a really good one. So that will happen where it normally does after the gospel reading. Also, we were just out. You saw some people leave and come back. The adult choir is going to surprise you with a little um, dismissal song. We're also going to be doing the dedication of our um, bright and shiny altarware after the closing hymn. And then I'll do a dismissal. And then Jan will be doing the highlights of the 175th anniversary. And then we'll be taking a group photo. I've been told that the people in the last three pews will not be seen from the balcony. So you guys are going to have to come up and find a way to get in the picture. I'm not going to tell you how, but I'm going to leave it up to you to do it. And then I'll do a blessing for the meal so that once people depart and go downstairs, you can just start helping yourself. You don't have to wait for any other instruction or blessing. Any questions? All right, hopefully we'll all just Go with the flow today and really have a good time. Thanks again for coming. Oh, yes, Beth, thank you. Okay, the birthdays. Dean Kerstetter. Michael Drury, happy Mi birthday, Michael. 72 or 62? 62. 62. <laughs> Sorry. Tori Kaufman, Keaton Rommel, Nick Decker. Jane Batesel, Brad Biggerman, Kendall Damon, Joshua Zegrak, and Reverend J. M. Bond. Happy birthday. And the anniversary. Oh, there's no anniversary for this year. Okay, here we go. Perfect, Jess. Thank you so much for remembering. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. and to strengthen your people until the time Christ comes to gather them unto himself from the ends of the earth. As we light this candle, open our eyes to see the sin that separates us from you and from one another. Restore us again to be blameless before your eyes on that day. 
stir up your power and come. Draw us into knowing you ever more deeply. Whenever evil or suffering holds sway, we pray, O Lord. Whenever war, evil, or crime oppress any people, we pray, O Lord. Whenever illness or injury cause pain, we pray, O Lord. Whenever pride or indifference imprison people, we pray, O Lord. Whenever people grieve or hunger, we pray, O Lord. Stir up your power and come. If you would stand as you're able for a brief order of confession and forgiveness. And join me in making the sign of the cross in remembrance of your baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is worthy of our trust, is both gracious and upright. Amen. Help us to bear our souls without wallowing in guilt or shame. Forgive us as we humbly confess our failings. God of mercy, you know all the stuff we struggle with, thoughts about the past, worries about the present, or our preoccupation with the future. We often say or do things on the power of our agile human egos or easily triggered emotions. We apologize for seeking our own paths towards success, safety, security, and comfort. Please remember not our sins and transgressions. Those who look to the Lord are already on the path to being taught, to finding God's steadfast love and growing in faith. Start a new beginning now through the power of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Receive the fullness of both God's grace and forgiveness. Amen. Amen.
there's so much going on today, I can't keep it straight. So please bear with me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here and online their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Together, let us recite parts of Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, look to you be put to shame. Rather let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, and you are I trust you all day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You believe the lowly of justice, and teach the lowly of your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. There'll be a little bit of time, time of transition as the bell ringers come up, and then also after they play, we'll need some time to move the tables and bells.
children that wish to get a break from the sanctuary and go with Quinn, child care will be provided by her today. service continues with the second reading taken from the first from the third chapter of first Thessalonians <laughs> how can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. 
to fill them with dead bodies. Those whom, I, those whom I shall strike down with my anger and my wrath, for I've hidden my face from this city because of all their wickedness. Jeremiah is a book of judgment against the people of Israel and their leaders. The people have strayed from following God's commands. They were unfaithful to God and brought judgment through destruction of the nation at the hands of their enemies. Now when we hear this, Jeremiah's prediction of restoration and a leader from the line of David, we think of Jesus. That's why this lesson is for us today. But that was probably not good news for the people in Jeremiah's time, because Jesus was born 587 years after that situation. After Jerusalem had been completely destroyed and the people had been carried away in captivity. If Jesus is the answer, waiting over 500 years is a difficult answer to hear. War and destruction were seen as God's judgment. The world in that time was a mess. So, how are things today? We live in confusing times. War continues to plague the world. Sudan, Yemen, Ukraine, and of course, Israel and Palestine. 2,600 years later, and Jerusalem is still a contested city, and innocent people are killed daily. Is this God's judgment? Who's being judged? And for what? We would like simple answers. We'd like it to be perfectly clear. Are we willing to wait 500 years to find out? Of all the voices that are crying out about injustice, which are God's prophets today? Who is Jeremiah in this moment? Are they found on Fox News or on MSNBC? Neither, I suspect. And so this morning, as perhaps we want to rush to Christmas, we have the voice of Jesus speaking to us. And perhaps we would like to read from Luke chapter 2, which is the birth narrative we'll get at Christmas. But rather, we have this text from chapter 21, and we hear of judgment, cosmic signs, and the end of times. And the great and glorious coming of the Lord, Christ will come again. The verses right before what we heard in chapter 21 are this, For there was great distress on the earth and wrath against his people. And they will fall by the edge of the sword and be taken away as captives among all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles. Those are Jesus' words as well. Jesus, like Jeremiah, before him predicts the destruction of Jerusalem. And in both cases, it did happen. Jesus says armies will come and destroy that's a contrast to what we'll hear on Christmas Eve in the text, when armies will be armies of angels, heralding the Savior's birth. And Jesus tells us that they will see the Son of Man coming on a cloud with great power and glory, which is contrasted with the birth of Jesus. When he came as a small child, born of an unwed mother in a stable, a homeless and humble beginning. Jesus here speaks of anxiety and distress among the nations of the earth. In the Christmas story, we will hear good news of great joy for all people. Can't we just skip ahead to the happy ending of Christmas? Do we really need this Advent? I think we do. We do not live in a simple creation. 
We live in an incredibly complex world. It's a world of both and. Not either or, but both and. The world desires a simple answer to everything. Abortion, race relations, human sexuality, freedom of speech, war in any place in the world. We simply want a right and a wrong answer. We simply want good guys and bad guys. There are no simple answers. None. We just had an election in which each side told us the issues could be reduced to a few simple answers. And of course, they had the right ones. There are no simple answers. That's what the scriptures tell us. There are times of calamity. There are times of darkness and destruction. And yet there is hope. That's the good news. Christ has died. Which means Christ was born and lived a human and complex life and was unjustly killed. And Christ was raised, which means that even sin and death do not have the final word. God has the final word, and there is resurrection. Death has been defeated, and Christ will come again. This moment is not the ultimate reality. God will have the final word. Yet we do not skip ahead to the end. The season of Advent reminds us that we must wait for God's action. So we simply do not go and stand on a mountaintop and wait for Jesus to descend in a cloud. No, Jesus wants us to live in this time and space. To be alert at all times is what he says. Praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Jesus will come again. And Jesus is here with us in his words that will not pass away. And Jesus is with us in a meal that we will share. Jesus is present and Jesus will come again, both and. And we should embrace this as Lutherans, because Luther said, we are saints and sinners, both and. There are not simple answers. There is great complexity in God's creation. There is great complexity in living with one another in society, we would like to rush to the end, to the happy ending, but that's not life to which we have been called. Each of us is to labor in God's kingdom, to appreciate its complexities, to have a sense of awe and wonder, to avoid simple answers that categorize people or judge our neighbors. We are to live as God intended us to live, loving God and loving our neighbor. So we gather this day to celebrate 175 years of the founding of this community of faith. What would that small group of people think of what they began 175 years ago. Would they have anticipated the civil war that broke out in their lifetime? Would they have seen that people would not come to church any longer by walking or by horse and buggy? Would they have anticipated electricity and the mechanization that would change our lives? and farming, that they think they had seen it all and that the world's problems could simply be solved. In each age, 
we're convinced that we can figure it all out. But that's not the reality of the complexity of God's creation. We live in a both-end world, a world of awe and wonder of what God has done and continues to do. That is the message of Advent. We are waiting for God. God is here, and God is coming. Both and. What will happen in the next 175 years of God's people gathered here in Halifax? It's simply not clear. What is clear is what we are to do, as Jesus said. To be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all the things that will take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. For Christ will come again, and we will stand before our God. And until that day, we wait patiently.
confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. and minds to receive you. Let us pray for all people and places that long to experience God's presence for themselves. God of righteousness, your people live in hopeful expectation of your coming. Fill your church with renewed passion for shared mission. Deepen relationships with other Christians and other faith traditions locally and across the world. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Remember your church according to your steadfast love and goodness. God of the cosmos and all of creation, your presence is awesome and made visible. Help us sense you on the earth and in the sky, among bare branches and frosty mornings, in the roaring sea and quiet breeze. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Remember our planet according to your steadfast love and goodness, O Lord. God of the nations, your reign extends over all principalities and powers. Give leaders and all in authority hearts for justice and peace. Encourage efforts to enact policies that benefit the common good. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Govern us according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. God of change, you accompany us through life's traditions, transitions. Be near to all who are changing jobs, moving, welcoming children, or facing the loss of loved ones. Sustain those who are ill or suffering, especially those on our prayer list. In times of change, remind us of your steadfast love. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Remember us for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. God of covenantal relationships, your spirit holds us together and has sustained the congregations of Messiah and St. Peter's for many, many years. Deepen our care for one another and for the community around us. Inspire us to live and worship together in creative ways, to serve with purpose and joy. Teach us to embrace new possibilities, diversity of thought, and ways of being. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Remember every generation according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O oh Lord. God, of sweet memories, we give you thanks for persons who came before us especially those we love, the ones who contributed faithfully toward the success of our churches, families, and neighborhoods. Tend to our sadness of their passing, we remember Shirley Jury, and encourage us to celebrate your promise of abundant and eternal life during the here and now. Let none who look to you be put to shame. We remember your steadfast love for the sake of your goodness, O oh Lord. God of our salvation, we lift our prayers to you alone. For you alone are full of mercy and grace. Your compassion and love are everlasting. Our souls trust in you according to the steadfast love and goodness sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose holy name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace.
us pray. Blessed are you, the Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. To them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new, in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness, and so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. In remembrance of Jesus Christ, let us pray together in the way he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
Please stand as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. to the glory of God, but they're also 
because church is about people. We look at our stained glass windows and they remind us that church is about people. If they were to look at the pews, they'd say, huh, this isn't like a restaurant where people face each other in little tables and chairs. Everybody faced forward. And they paid attention to God. And hopefully the, that, that would be obvious. So we have a new rule in the house that nobody touches the candlesticks. <laughs> nobody touches the cross or the flower vases without using gloves or a cloth. The reason we do that is because our human hands will leave an imprint. It will tarnish it. I don't know that God would be upset about that. I think God would like the fact that people were here and people were involved and they were putting the flowers in the vases. But for now, we're going to try and keep them pure and beautiful to remind us of how God is pure and beautiful. And we thank the Snyder family for helping us to get this done and also Messiah Lee's aid. The other reason we want to keep them this way is because it's very expensive to get them this way. So, um, when in doubt, put your hands in your pockets. <laughs> and don't touch the things that are on the altar. But do enjoy them and admire them. And think about how church is a combination of exquisiteness devoted to God and the common humanity of God being devoted to us. All right, I gotta see what's next on my schedule. All right, so the choir is now gonna do us a, a, a blessing for you. And then after that, we'll do like our normal dismissal and I'll say go in peace to love and serve the Lord because that's what you're used to, but don't leave. <laughs> During that time, the people in the last three rows need to think of how they're going to come forward to get in the picture, because you can't not be in the picture. And then Jan's going to say a little few words about our anniversary um, finale before the picture, and then we'll do a meal blessing. Okay? So adult choir, come on up.
here. So here's the part you're used to. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And you say, Thanks be to God. But don't go anywhere. Greta's going to play some music for Mia to extinguish the candles, and then Jan will be up. This is not because it's a long speech, it's because I just might need it. So don't worry about that. Okay, hello everyone. Thank you all for joining us today in our celebration. And I'd like to take a moment, first of all, to thank Bishop Dunlop for being with us today. It is such a pleasure having you here. So thank you so much. Also, we want a special uh, thank you thrown out to our old friends and former pastors, Pastor Mike and Pastor Kranz, for joining us. It's really great to see you back at the side again. On behalf of the anniversary committee, I would like to thank the Snyder families uh, for their generous contribution to the refinishing of the outerwear uh, in commemoration of our 175th anniversary. And a special appreciation goes out to Kathy Brown, who was tasked with finding a craftsman to refinish the outerwear. There is only about two or three in the country, and the one that she called had just retired the week before she quit. So she had quite a job, so thanks to Kathy. The committee would also like to thank Stephen Blaze for designing our logo with our slogan, Living in God's Amazing Grace. And we thank Evan Alden, a member of Messiah now living in Florida, who took that lovely logo and crafted it into a very beautiful wood carved commemorative Christmas tree ornament, which we have for sale. <laughs> so if you wish to have one, we do hope you get one. It's a beautiful keepsake. We have someone display outside. See Diana or Judy at some point. We send a special thank you to Carol Stone Road for her incredible research on the stained glass windows that we did for this year. And also to Roz Ogden for her extra history that she found that contributed to what the anniversary committee had also discovered. We want to thank the Church Council and the Ladies Aid for their continued support throughout this whole year. And a shout out to the men who helped us erect the 13-foot Christmas tree outside, our official anniversary tree, which has been shining bright this whole year and will continue to until the end of the season. So thank you to those men. And an advance thank you to those same men for coming back in January to help us take it down. <laughs> If anyone wishes to have that tree, you're welcome to it. And of course, I want to thank the anniversary committee that helped me this year. Kyle Huffman, Diana, Judy, Sandy Javelbiss, Pastor Brody. They were an incredibly fun group to work with. Um, they even dress up in period costumes of the 1800s and will reenact Sunday school programs for you from back in the 1800s, so they were really fun to, to, to work with. Oh, and I have an extra one. I just saw it today before, I, before we came up. A thank you to Beth Hogan for a fantastically beautiful anniversary cake that you're going to enjoy later. You've got to check it out. It was really pretty. Okay, folks, now, for the end of our anniversary event. Throughout this year, we shared with you little bits of our church history that you did not know. Stories of founding members 
that stirred your emotions and discoveries from the past that enlightened you on this town in the 1800s and the earliest members of our congregation. We began by taking you back to the year 1849 when Zachary Taylor was the president and bread cost only four cents a loaf. A time when a new church was being formed in the town of Fisherville, the German Reformed and Lutheran Church. We surprised many of you when we told you how Fisherville in 1862 was a booming town. It was home to 17 different businesses, including two hotels, three physicians, and three churches. Looking back over the years, we shared with you our church's desire to help others by reaching beyond our brick walls and out to the faraway corners of the world. Honduras, Costa Rica, Liberia, Guatemala, Tanzania, and Africa. And how our outreach programs and missionary support still continue today. We remember the five refugee families we helped to rehome and the support we have given to numerous local programs and projects in our efforts to help our neighbors. And the 40 plus years of a preschool program and a live nativity, which by the way, live nativity next Sunday, Mattis Farm. We reminisced about sunrise services with a tiny pedal power organ and children's choir with Grace Mattis and her famous fudge. And of course, we remember the shock and awe of many when we dared to perform the 1973 rock opera, Jesus Christ Superstar, in a relatively conservative community. Three performances, packed house, and Pastor Cranks expertly playing the part of Satan. During our second anniversary event celebrating the 175 years of Sunday School, we learned that the original church's Sunday School was known as the Fisherville Union Sabbath School, and it offered German Bible classes for the German-speaking people in the area, such as Braden. Translation? Hang in there, everyone. She's almost ready. <laughs> That is my German-speaking son-in-law. <laughs> I have a son-in-law who is Irish from Dublin, but you can't understand a word he says. <laughs> As we pay tribute to our founding members from the, the special Sunday school event, we brought to life those mysterious names that we see each week on these stained glass windows by sharing the stories behind those names, such as Joseph Snyder, one of the most prosperous farmers in the area, who served as a deacon of the church, was the ancestor of the Snyders who contributed our altar wear, and ultimately suffered a brutal death when he was gored by an angry bull. Peter Klinger, back window, a farmer and carpenter, owning one of the businesses in Fisherville. He fought in the Civil War, was a respected leader in the church, and sadly endured the loss of his wife, his four-year-old son, and his one-year-old daughter, all within 14 days. Kathleen Bixler, who we could only imagine her as an esteemed society lady of the community, because her husband Cornelius was a prominent businessman, owning numerous businesses, served as a lieutenant in the Civil War, and as a county commissioner later in life. Kathleen most likely contributed to the ladies' aid and the charity work in our town. Peter Erb, a name you don't see here on the windows, but it's a name that we kept seeing so often in the old Sunday school ministry, that, well, Sunday school minutes that we researched. So we dug deeper and, with the, and uh, shared with you the saga of Peter. His father died before he was born. His mother abandoned him and gave him to his grandfather to raise. At the age of 12 years, his grandfather died, and Peter found himself alone. To survive, he worked as a farmhand for room and board. He became a shoemaker apprentice at the age of 14. He enlisted in the Army and served in the Southern Atlanta Campaign of the Civil War. 
war. Eventually, he found his way back to Fisherville, where he became a devoted member and leader in our church. What we learn from those names on our sanctuary windows and from members like Peter Erb is that the heart and soul of our founding members came from diverse walks of life, but with the same driving purpose, to establish and grow a church where they could worship together. You'll find most of those named on the windows buried in the church's cemetery. And what we so sadly discovered while searching for their grave sites is that the oldest section of our cemetery, right here beside the church, there are 132 tombstones, of which 81 of them are children who were either only a few days or a few years old. It reminded us of the hardships of our founding, founding members and the blessings of our modern medicine. In closing, as we noted in our previous opening service ceremony at the event, our church, any church, is so much more than its walls and steeple, more than the size of its congregation or the wealth of its treasury. It's the people in the church, the faith they possess, and the love they share with one another. It's those people who first gathered in 1849 with a faith in God that inspired them to build a church. It's the people since then that have ministered from the pulpit, attended countless committee meetings, taught our children, given up their time to help in our church projects, and humbly listened or learned from the sermon each week. The Messiah Lutheran Church is this, in this small, obscure town of Fisherville, has rocked this community. It has contributed to the betterment and livelihood and needs of the needy in our area. It has reached across the oceans to desperate people in other lands to bring them aid in Christian love. And it has ministered and married and baptized and eulogized hundreds and hundreds of his own God-loving, God-serving parishioners. And 175 years later, here we are, still here, living in God's amazing grace. May we continue what our founding church fathers and mothers began. Thank you all for celebrating this with us. Now, for those of you who are interested, we have been asked by several to put together the scripts of our different events throughout the year. We will be doing that, and we will have them uh, with the history provided that we also shared with you. We'll put that on the website eventually on Open Day, okay? And also, I will attach it to a future uh, Sunday school email as well. And now, it's time for all of you to become a part of Messiah's history. Pastor Jody might not tell you how to line up, but I will. <laughs> First of all, I'm going to ask uh, if Pastor Brody and Bishop Dunlap would come here, and Pastors Krenz and Pastor Mike to join us as well. Uh, Ron is going to be taking a picture of this group first. Uh, and a big round of applause for Ron for offering to do all this great stuff. Please write your names in all of the black area around there, sign it for us, 
uh, so that we can have your names and your signatures with that photo. Okay, uh, council members, Messiah council members, you're going to come up next. We're going to fill it up here. And the balcony can start to come down as well. Oh, balcony can start to come, balcony can start coming down as well. Okay, council members, start throwing in all around. Some up here with them, because we got to uh, pack a bunch of people in here. I want all council members, beside the council members, jump on up. Yes. Come on up. You're going to be in the picture. It doesn't matter. Needs to go up too. We're getting everybody up. I'm just trying to get people one at a time up here so you can tell a little bit, okay? Drew Lisa knows that she couldn't do it without you. Get up here, please. <laughs> Hold on, Drew's coming. Power of peer pressure. <laughs> Am I out of the picture? Am I out of the picture? Am I still in the way? Bob's in the way. This is in the way. Oh, oh. You want in? No, I do not. I'm trying to stay out. Am I still out? Should I jump down? No, I would. I'm telling you. Let's start with the. Uh, okay, go ahead. Don't rush the photographer, Jan. Okay. Yeah. How's that? Okay. All right. Uh, balcony, come on up. Last two views, last three views. Start coming up. You are going to fill in everywhere in front of here and right behind the tables. Okay. The rest of you in the views are going to stand up and turn around because Ron is taking this picture from the balcony. Oh, you were wondering how we're going to do it, weren't you? Everyone just fill in. Fill in back What's here as well, right here in front of this whole row here. We get all this? No, let's see. Let's see first.
too. Thanks be to God. Let's eat. <laughs> Thank you.